increase more and more, you and your children may be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord for this time forth and forevermore. And the word of the Lord has been read. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. All eyes closing his vow. Eternal Father, we thank you this morning. God, we just thank you for who you are, Father. For as in you do we move, breathe, and have our being. Hallelujah. We are nothing without you, Father. We ask that you draw nigh unto us as we draw nigh unto thee. We lift up the loss unto you, Father. For them who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Father God. We ask you from God. Hallelujah. For your arms is not sh too short where you can't reach down and save them, Father God. We lift up the sick and the shed in, Father God. We know you to be a healer. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heal it thee. You say you sent your word, hallelujah, that you might heal all sickness and disease. And Father God, we lift up the praise team on to you this morning as they come to sing songs of Zion, Father God. We thank you for anointing, hallelujah, their tongues, Father God. And bless the music ministry, Father, in the name of Jesus as they play on the instruments, Lord God, to the glory of you, Father, hallelujah. And bless the man of God, this morning as he come to deliver your word, Father God. For he's the angel of this house, Lord God. Lord God, seal his words, Lord God, as he speak on to your children this morning. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord shall be blessed. And is blessing it is. So let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right. You can clap your hands for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lord, how many of you glad to be in the sanctuary this morning? Yes, yes. We didn't know if we would make it till today, but he's graced us. Hallelujah. Somebody said tomorrow is not promised to you. you know that in days today is not even promised to you. So I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise like you're glad to be here this morning. Yes, yes. He's an awesome God and we give him glory. Hallelujah. Psalm says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I don't know if you're going to do it, but it said, with me. Yeah, so that means I'm going to be doing something this morning because I'm glad that we serve a great God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. And this is just our time for you to give God what you think he deserves. Come on. Come on. Show me what you think he deserves this morning. Hallelujah. Show him how much he means to you because he's a great God. And I just want us to lift it up all over the house. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Come on and clap your hands real good. Yeah. Let's lift it up. 
and do it. I lift my hand to give you glory. I lift my hand to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Here's a question. Oh, will you praise him? above every name. Sing it with me. Name above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, mighty are the works of your hand. We're just declaring the truth this morning. Your name
Calvary. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Yes, yes. No music. We're going to lift it up to him. Because somebody needs to know he's a great. I'm going to lift it up to him. He's greater than any problem. He's greater than any pandemic. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. How great is our God. One more time. Somebody is getting, is getting in your spirit. How great, how great. Yes, he is. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is he. Oh, we'll see how great, how great, how great. Somebody is our God. Yes, they needed to hear that this morning. He's greater than anything we face. Come on and give him glory. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Yes, he's a great God. Yes, he's a great God. Well, our God is great and greatly to be praised. Would you give him the best one you have? I know you gave him some earlier. But give him the best praise you have all over this room. Glory to God. He's a great God. He deserves great praise. Anybody really know he's great this morning? Just wave your hand and say, Lord, you're so great. You woke me up this morning. Gave me the activity of my limbs this day. God is great. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God a great praise, everybody. Before you take your seats, look at somebody. Tell them something's going to happen for me today. I just believe God's going to do something. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I feel like God's going to do something powerful in this place today. You do know God will meet you at your place of expectation. When you come in and say, God, I expect you to do something. God's going to move for you. I want you to get your Bible. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I want to call your attention to the gospel according to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I want to read one verse there into your hearing. If you don't have a Bible, it's on the screen in front of you. Matthew 5 and 30. Look what the word of God says. And... If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. <laughs> It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. I want to preach to you today from the subject, I'd rather lose it than lose me. No, 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 y'all not ready. Look at somebody, you don't even have to know, point at them and say, I'd rather lose it then to lose me, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here in the gospel according to Matthew, in fact, chapters 5, 6, and 7, that Matthew allows us and affords us the opportunity to kind of get a glimpse at the sermon notes from perhaps one of the greatest sermons that has ever been proclaimed. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, and 7, records what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It is within the 
confinements of the Sermon on the Mount that we learn as believers what the Beatitudes were. And we also learn the Lord's Prayer in uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 through the Sermon on the Mount. But what is more profound and prolific as Jesus begins to teach and minister through this sermon, he also gives us some instructions that are to have lasting impact on our life because in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, he begins to teach us as believers how to live and remain healthy. Jesus begins to teach us that our spiritual, our mental, our physical health are often forfeited because of our unwillingness to cut off some things that are detrimental to our overall well-being. And so in order to make this impression in my mind and your mind, he uses the imagery and he uses a metaphor of a body that is predominantly healthy, but it has developed an aggressive disease in the right hand. The emphasis he wants us to focus on, ladies and gentlemen, is that this disease in the right hand is malignant, which means that it has the tendency and the great probability that it will become more severe and progressively worse as time goes on, which means that the survival of the whole body is being threatened by the disease in one hand. Every other part of the body is good. The heart is fine. The lungs are fine. The kidneys are fine. The organs are functioning properly. There's no problem with the eyes, the ears, or the throat. But this one infected right hand is jeopardizing the health of the entire body. And so Jesus looks at them and offers them and presents to them the most logical course of action. He says that in order to save the whole body, you have to cut off the infected limb. Uh, I, I'm a preacher to somebody in this room because the truth is we are often to our own to our own demise opposed to eliminating behaviors thought patterns and actions that constantly keep us in a cycle of regret, consumed by resentment, and committed to reckless, unhealthy behaviors that we're trying to hold on to because we have not yet realized how much better off we would be if we would just cut them off. Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm a preacher to somebody. Remind your neighbor of the subject. Tell him I'd rather lose it then lose me. The truth is, I don't think most people understand how critical of a state that you subject your life, your spirit to, when you give no consideration to the unnecessary consequences we bring upon ourselves, when we don't cut some stuff Oh, now notice in Jesus' diagnosis of the state and condition of this body, he concludes that only one thing, one area in the body was wrong. The hand was the only infected area, and if it was not given swift attention and immediate action, it would destroy everything else. Let me talk to somebody, let me preach to somebody in this room and tell you, you are going to risk everything you have and everything you have going for you if you don't cut off that thing all right sit there like i'm not preaching to you like you got it all together let me just try it out do i have anybody here that knows there's some things in your life that needs to be cut off one, two, three. Okay, I got, a, I got a few honest people. You don't have your cute tra church face on. The truth of the matter is, most of us, if we were honest, can reduce the problems in our life down to one thing. Most of your money is going to that thing. Most of your sleepless nights can be contributed to that one thing. And so my question is to you, why risk it all when you can just rid yourself of it once and for all? 
Lord, I'm about this message myself. I, I, I don't know. Have you ever looked back over your life once you rid yourself of some behavior, some people, some tendencies, some proclivities, and look back and say, I could have got five years back of my life if I wasn't so immersed and enveloped in behaviors and patterns that were unhealthy. They were not profitable for me. And the Lord sent me here this morning to tell you, you better make up your mind. I'd rather lose that then lose uh ladies and gentlemen the reason we never take this as seriously as we should sister beverly is because perhaps we don't realize how many how we are affected by infected people God, that felt good. We don't, we, we don't realize that, that, that that's why you can't just grant easy access to people in your life. You have to screen people. You, you have to screen their spirit. I know they're fine. I know they're tall. I get all that. But once you get through all that, the Bible says that man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you are being deceived into embracing things close to you that are going to destroy you and not add any kind of value and ladies and gentlemen the problem is we are affected by people who are infective you can be around infectious people who ultimately affect your perspective about life about God and what you can accomplish because here's what you would discover they are so bitter that they don't even want to see you do better I'm going to give you that for free. I ain't going to charge you a dime for that. There are people around you now, they're bitter because life is not working for them. They tried what you are attempting to do, and they can't seem to get it off the ground. And so you got to watch bitter people who are mad because you are even thinking about doing better. See, most people don't have a problem with you until you start doing just a little better. God, I thought I had a church in here now. That, that big, God says you got to watch the people that are around you because your life can easily become affected because of the infectious people. Uh, they cause you to second guess what's possible for you. They, they affect your plans about your life because they are so infected with doubt and negative outlook that they influence you not to be expectant or optimistic. And the Lord sent me here to tell you, you got to make up your mind. I'd rather lose it. I mean, come on. You're not making me better. You're not adding to me. Why am I keeping you around? God, I... Oh, I got to get off of that because I just, I just had a flashback. And, and isn't it amazing how you can embrace things that are the most detrimental for you, but you tend to shoot the people who have nothing but the best interest for your life. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are surrounded by infected people, they will try to convince you as to how unlikely it is that you're going to accomplish what it is that you are setting out to do. And they will try to impose, watch this, unfounded and illegitimate fears upon your life. Let me tell you, most of the fear you have didn't come from you. It came from somebody you were connected to. God, y'all know, I'm telling you, so some of the fears you have right now, it didn't come from you. It came from people that's, oh, I wouldn't try it if I were you. But if you don't try it now, when are you going to try it? Huh? What, what do you think? Days are not for sale. All you have is what you have now. At some point, you got to say, you know what I'm going for, crash or burn. But I'm not going to sit on the sideline in life talking about what I was going to do, what I should have done. I got to get up and decide that if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the Lord said that the the path has been cleared for you to do what it is I've called you to do. Make a run for it. Step out by faith and put yourself in position. Ooh, God, I'm trying not to dance, but I feel it sneaking up on me now. Because what I want to tell you is that your success or your survival will be determined by how strong your cutoff game is. I don't know if they caught that expertise. Let me try to get on this side. Your success and your survival is going to be predicated on how strong 
Your cut off game is God. See, you've been crying about God. Why am I so lonely? Why am I by myself? Why is nobody around me? Because God wanted to teach you how to eat lunch by yourself, how to fly by yourself in case people start tripping with you and think that them leaving is going to disrupt your sanity and your environment. No, that I was fine before you got here. Chances are I'm going to be fine if you're no longer around. But I got to decide I'd rather lose anything. God, help me preach. Lord sent me to tell you, you, you got to cut that off. Uh, there, there's some things, some appointments you're going to have to cancel. Uh, there, there, there's some people you're going to have to call that off with. See, because when you start valuing your purpose and your life and what God has for you, you get to a point where you don't owe anybody a long explanation for an exit that's been long overdue. Lord, I'm going to give myself a love offering today. That was good. You don't know nobody an explanation for an exit that's been long overdue. They've been wearing you out mentally. They've been frustrating you emotionally. My question is, how long is it going to be before you decide to cut it? Jesus says that your health is in jeopardy. Um, your mental stability is in jeopardy because of your unwillingness to cut off some stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to get to the point where you value who you are and where you're going and what God has on your life. That you're no longer willing to grant access to heavy, unnecessary baggage. How long are you going to keep dragging your past into your future? They don't match. They're not supposed to be together. At some point, you're going to have to sever the ties and say, I'm walking into the future God has for me. Jesus looks at it and says, it's like a body. Everything else is fine with it. But the one hand is infected. He says, if you don't cut it off, it's going to affect the rest of the body. Lord, help me. You have to cut it off, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. Because for too long, you've been ignoring the dysfunction. See, I know I'm going to get too many shouts on that. Um, because the reality of it is, you know it's not working. It's not functioning like it should, but instead of addressing it, you make adjustments to deal with it. And so what happens, ultimately, it will not matter how much you work on it. It will not matter how much time you invest in it. It does not matter how much attention you give to it. At some point, you got to decide, I am no longer going to make this dysfunction normal. Ooh, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to in there, but you settled for what you know. It ain't fun. Well, you know, it's just, it's all right. How long are you going to live your life with it being all right? How long are you going to just live your life and say, well, is this, somebody is better than, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Because uh, the, 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 you, you ignoring how dysfunctional your life is, and you would rather risk ruin everything else you got because you won't cut off the things. That's infecting your entire life. Ladies and gentlemen, not only should you cut it off because for far too long you've been ignoring the dysfunction, but check this out. The deterioration is inevitable. Uh, there will be times when nothing can be done to remedy, to remedy the matter. There will be times in your life where there can be no course of action that can reverse the damage. And the truth of the matter is you have got to make a call for your life and say this is not getting any better. It's perhaps never going to get any better. And how much more time are you going to give to people to prove to you they are a waste of your time? And Jesus says to you, he says, tell them, cut it off. Somebody shout back at me, cut it off, cut it off. Maybe not at me. Find somebody you rolled with who you know. They got some stuff they probably should be cutting off right now. You wouldn't be so miserable and frantic and frustrated is because you got some stuff. Why do we hold on to stuff that we know is killing us? Uh, why? Why am I holding on to it? You already got my right hand. It's only a matter of time before you get everything else. And the Lord sent me to stop somebody and arrest your mind and tell you you're worth more than that. 
that I've invested so much value in you that at some point, ladies and gentlemen, you got to learn how to cut your losses because sometimes you might have to lose to gain. Uh, Y'all missed that. I'm telling you, Fantasia said it. Sometimes you got to lose to win again. Sometimes you got to let some stuff go in order for you to go into the destiny that God... As for your life, you got to cut it off because you've been ignoring the dysfunction for too long. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to cut it off because the, t the deterioration is inevitable. No matter how much salve you put on, no matter how, matter how much oil you put on it, band-aids on it, it's still going to get worse and worse and worse by the moment. And if you don't cut it off, you are sabotaging yourself. Not only that, but he says you got to cut it off. Watch this. The detachment has to be intense, not incremental. Your problem is not you, somebody over here. Your problem is you keep saying stuff like, you know, well, I'm going to let it go gradually. I, I, I'm going to be done with it this month, and then this month turns into seven months, and seven months turn to a year, and two months is turned into three years. And God says that I want you to cut it off, not nicely, delicately, slice a piece here, take a piece there. Oh, I'm a priest to somebody because you're cute, and you're thinking that you're trying to do God's job for him. And God says the reality of it is you got to decide when I detach, I got to attach and detach intentionally, and it cannot be incrementally. Let me put it in non-bible term you got to do it cold turkey so you got to decide hey today is the last day I'm subjecting myself to this treatment today is the last day that I'm tolerating being treated less than who I am says you got to cut it off everybody shall cut it off but now see that would be a great thing if Jesus stopped there but he didn't just say cut it off he said cast it <laughs> God, help me preach. Because a lot of you are cutting off some stuff, but you keep it in. Oh, you blocked their number on your phone? You just ain't deleted it yet. Oh, I'm a priest to my real folk now. Uh, the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, what you must do when you cut things out of your life is that you must distance yourself intentionally. Because if you don't distance yourself, how many know? Well, I don't know how many of y'all are going to be honest, but there's some stuff you cut off that if it gets quiet enough, lonely enough, you get rejected by enough people and things don't go well, you're almost tempted to go back to the same stuff. And Jesus said that when you cut it off, you got to throw that stuff so far away from you that by the time you try to leave from where you are and go there, your conscience kicks in. I say, you come too far to take that kind of set back now. God's doing too much in your life for you to be held back by where you are now. And you got to make up your mind. I got to cut it off and throw it away. Somebody say, throw it away. Yeah, throw it away. God, I feel like shouting right now because have you ever took a flashback over your life and look at the stuff you cut and look at the stuff you threw away? Because the one thing you got to make up your mind, once I'm done, I'm done. Done. I'm telling you, I don't know if there's anybody in here like me. I don't know. I don't do the back and forth. I'm not letting you negotiate with my peace of mind. I'm not letting you negotiate with my heart and the matters and my emotions. Once I'm done, I'm done. And the Bible says you got to cut it and throw it. I need somebody by faith to throw some stuff right now. Throw it and kick it as far away from you as you can. Devil, you're not going to be able to use the same tactic. God, I feel your anointing in this room now. Somebody's getting free right now. The Lord told me to tell you, you've been waiting on me to stop some stuff. I've been waiting on you to stop some stuff. It didn't say he was going to cut it off. He said, I'm going to sit right here. Until you decide. Cut it off. Uh, here's where I'm going to close at, and I hope you're ready to shout. Because what Jesus shows us in this text is that even though the right hand was infected and it was malignant, even though it was spreading and the probability of it getting worse was severe, when the arm is cut off, watch this, Jesus wanted us to understand that you can still live without it. 
Lord, I lost my shoulders right there. Your problem is you're holding on to stuff that you think if it goes, you're going to go under. You're going to die. The devil is. And there's some people that walk out of your life and life gets better in the next 10 minutes. Opportunities show up. Prospects arise in your life. There are something you've been holding on to because you're scared. If they leave me, nobody else is going to want me. The devil is. And you're going to have them standing up in line. The Lord sent me here this morning. Everybody's standing all over this room. He sent me to tell you that you can live even if you don't have that. What made you think that anybody, any entity, any source other than God was in control of the sustainability of your life and the survival of it? I want to pray for you today because the Lord sent me to talk to somebody and tell you, I'd rather lose it than lose me. Watch it. I didn't even get The Bible says, I'd rather go to heaven with one arm missing than to go to hell with my whole body intact. Maybe you're in this room this morning and you said, Preacher, I want to receive Jesus Christ. No question about it. This is my day. If you're in this room, hear me. Do not let this word go in one ear and go out the other ear. The Lord sent me on assignment for you this day. And the choice is yours. I'd rather lose that than to lose me any day. If you're in this room and you're seeking salvation, I want you to come from wherever you are this day. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this room. Doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how far you've gone. Truth is, all of us have had to cut off some stuff, and perhaps some of us still have some stuff to cut off. But aren't you glad you serve a God that's a gracious God? Maybe you're in this room and you're backsliding, you thought God wouldn't want anything else to do with you you messed up so horrifically but I want to tell you about God who still wants you back come wherever you are nobody has to know but you and God stop sitting in church feeling judged and condemned the Bible says that those who have a contrite spirit and a broken heart he said I will receive them if you're here come wherever you are or maybe you're in this room and you say I love him I got a relationship with Jesus Christ but what I need is a church home I need a pastor I need a place to be planted rooted and grounded and if God is speaking to you this day would you come come on why sit there another day God's waiting for you hallelujah if you're saved and know it would you give God the best praise you got all over this room hallelujah come on you can do better than that give him a great rousing applause God of our salvation you may be seated in the presence of the Lord this time we're getting ready to honor the Lord in our giving this offering time in the house of the Lord, everybody. We never see giving as an option. We always see it as an opportunity for God to bless us and increase us in everything that we do. I want to, as always, commend you for being such an amazing, an amazing, amazing church. Even through a pandemic, you've been faithful to God. You've been faithful to your church. How many tithers are here with us today? Any tithers in the house? Lift your hand if you're tithing in this service. Yeah, praise God for you. Everyone, we need every tither in the building to release your tithe. Bible says that when we are tithers, God opens up the windows of heaven. Yes, Lord, I'm living under an open heaven. I tell people that all the time. I live under an open heaven because I understand the principle of sowing and reaping and giving to the Lord. And as we are preparing, we've been doing a marvelous job of uh, these last few weeks in terms of our giving and being faithful. Last week I asked you to do something. You stood up to the plate and we hit our goal, our target um, goal for last week. I'm going to ask you to join me again on this week. I need at least, there, there are enough people to do it. I need as many people that would today that can just sacrificially sow at least a $50 gift into your ministry. Of course you know we are doing some significant work. Have you seen the chapel? You've seen the front of the building. We are working every day uh, to do upgrades and to increase things. If you still need an envelope, lift your hand there. 
the, the ushers, they'll serve you where you are because I want everybody to get in on this. I don't want any person to miss out on this giving opportunity. I need as many persons that can in this service that will say, Bishop, I will stand with you and plant at least a $50 seed. The only reason I'm not giving that is because I simply don't have it and I understand you cannot give what you don't have. So what are you going to do? You're going to get the best seed that you have. It may be 42. It may be 13. Whatever it is, I want you to sow it by faith and I want you to believe that our great God is going to cause us to prosper. Hallelujah. Everybody standing all over the sanctuary. Face your right, those who are coming out to give. The ushers are going to lead the Lord's people out. God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver, not a tearful giver. Those who are giving in person, would you face your right and follow the person in front of you and come around to sow your seed? Those who are giving online, use our cash app, our Givelify, text to give, the website. There are many means for you to give. I'm expecting great things. Hallelujah. Those of you who are giving on your device, God bless you. I see you. Thank you, Jesus. Expecting great things. Great things. Everybody say great things. Hallelujah. I'm expecting. Expecting great things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Plant your seed by faith. Yes, Lord. Expecting great. Come on, people of God. Bless the Lord. Oh, in my life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You do great things. Oh, thank you, in Jesus. my home. Oh, Lord, you do great things. Sister yeah. Sister Beverly. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Yeah, I'm expecting great things. Come on, lift your hands and sing it with me. Great things. Oh. all over the house. Let's lift it up. Great thing. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give the Lord a great praise today. We are always excited. First of all, any first time visitor sharing with us, lift your hand if you're a first time visitor. Let's thank God for our brother, our sister in the rear, our sister. Back. Come on, new home, show them how we appreciate all of our first time visitors that are sharing with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I see you on the end. God bless you. Uh, we are always so thrilled to have visitors with us. We are just under the impression that once you come one time, we call you family. Uh, so we are excited to have you with us today. Now understand we have with us, come, who do we have? Would you give God praise for her? She is submitting herself for public office, and we are certainly thrilled to have you with us. Come on up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Bolden. That was very inspirational. Often, my name is Kristen Palmer. I currently sit on the New Orleans City Council for District C. Some of you may know it's all of Algiers, so you have a wonderful collection. I know there's been a, definitely new home. We've had them in Algiers and Central City, and I thank you for that, that you offer yourselves all over the city. And it's been a big contribution. But I am giving myself up for, um, for at large, and I think it's a very important time. And, and listening to your sermon, Bishop, we talk about um, cutting it off and sometimes we do that through action because it's intolerant, right? That's why we cut it off. And so we need to also be intolerant sometimes as we move forward. And we have to be intolerant of what's happening in this city when it comes to crime, when it comes to unaffordable housing, when it comes to inequity in our communities and our neighborhoods. We see that very clearly in communities that I represent in Algiers and, 
and the upper nine, but also in New Orleans East, in areas that don't have the same types of resources that we need. And we need to sometimes be intolerant of that. And that's why I'm giving myself up. I've served two terms. I'm from a family of 10. I'm one of eight children. We've learned service at a young age. My mother was a teacher. My father was a former federal prosecutor. And that taught us service. And it also taught us to also serve through intolerance and to, and to give to our fellow people and to make sure that we can actually lift up our communities. And that is why I'm going. And that is why I think it's incredibly important. So in this journey, I'm just here to, to say thank you for, for be he being here and being part of this community. And I'm also asking for your prayers as we move forward in this time. Um, there's a time of great need with COVID. We're going, unfortunately, back into a, a darker period. You know, and I've been very active um, during this period when we saw the need in our community. Um, not only did I set up a food pantry in Algiers, but I did and I worked with council members all over the district, all over the city. I worked with council member Banks, I set one up for him, and council member Jeruso, and I'm wonderful, our state rep Math Willard, and also our state rep Candace Newell. And by doing that, we were able to pass out over a million pounds of food and serve over 80,000 people. And we did that for 15 months with volunteers from people from everywhere. And, and that is what we need to bring at large because this city has been under threat. You know, and I saw it post Katrina. I was head of a nonprofit re rebuilding houses and bringing folks home all over the city. And that's why I gave myself up for service because people that were making decisions and making promises were actually preventing us from coming home. And I see that's where we are today. We need people that have been working in the communities that understand our challenges and that can make a, a larger difference across the city. And that is why I'm giving myself up and I just wanna thank you for allowing me to be here today with you and allowing me to worship. And I humbly ask for your prayers. So thank you and thank you for sharing. Come on, let's give God praise for one more time. Hallelujah. All right, don't forget today, uh, those of you who are going to support uh, Sister Wanda Williams. Is she here? Did I see us again? There she go with the purple on with the blessed across her shirt. Uh, that's one of our own. She is the owner of Hidden Treasures Furniture Store, 4952 Bullet Avenue. Today we're going over there uh, just to bless her and pronounce God's blessing on uh, that business and that property. It's from 1030 to 3. Uh, indoor, outdoor shopping. The first 20, well, the first 19 people because I get the first free gift. First 20 people in the door received a, a free gift, and there's going to be food and music and all that. And as you've been hearing over the last few weeks, I've been encouraging us to support all of the amazing entrepreneurs that we have in our church. We've highlighted a few over the last few weeks, and we have tons more to go because I believe that God will bless you uh, to be in charge of your own economic positioning in life if you are faithful to him. So today, that's right, God will do it for you. Uh, so we want to do that and be a blessing to her. All right. All right, everybody stand. We're getting ready to leave the house of the Lord. Were you blessed this morning? Did you enjoy the Lord? Man, I'm telling you, I don't even want to leave y'all. I'm telling you, lift your hand. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we pronounce your favor and your blessing upon these, your people. As they leave this place, we bind all car accidents, all breakdowns, all malfunctions. Let your people make it to their destination safely. Father, we thank you now. Let them find things better than they were when they even left today. Father, it is my prayer as always that you would love on us like only you can. Cover us like only you can. Until we meet together again in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.